Hello, Mark here again from Cosmic Audio, and today we're going to be talking about recording a choir in a church. So a couple of weeks ago, we were invited down to High Beach Church, 10 minutes down the road from where we are here, to record a choir. Now we've recorded choral music, choirs, many times before, and it's always good fun. It's quite often a bit of a challenge because it's a very difficult thing to get right. The human voice is one of the most difficult things to record purely because our ears are so tuned to hearing human voices. The first thing you hear when you're born is the sound of another human voice. So it's something you get very used to very quickly and it can be very difficult to get right. Just recording spoken word can be very difficult. Um, people think, oh, those guys that do audio books, they've got it easy, they've only got to mix a bit of vocal. It's very difficult to get it sounding natural. And it's the same with a group of people as, as well. You, you know, you go to, if you're in a Christian country like this one, whether you're a Christian or not, you tend to go to church when you're at school and you hear the sound of a choir and you it's it's something you're you're kind of it's almost kind of built into us. It's like the sound of the organ. It's something that's been around so long. It's been around for hundreds of years and it's kind of deeply ingrained in us almost. So it can be a very difficult thing to get right, but there's a few simple little tips to make sure that if you're recording something like a choir or you're recording a string quartet in a in something you know in a space something that's away from rock music that's not based around drums and guitars and, and loud things something that's a bit more natural a bit more soft and a bit more gentle there are some tips you can use to get a better sounding recording now the easiest way to approach it we had so the session they they wanted to record four pieces of music we had three hours in total which is quite tight time wise so that includes setting up getting there loading everything in setting up doing the recording and packing down and getting out again so it's it's it was quite tight time wise um so basically we got we got there a bit early we got everything out the van um the setup we used we used the Focusrite claret which is a superb audio interface there's a video on our youtube channel um, which covers the the glorious pros of the focus right claret it's a fantastic interface um, we took that in in a rack um, and we took basically every condenser microphone we own so as we could try different microphones in different positions when we got there um, we also had we knew there was going to be an electric piano so we had a couple of di boxes for that um, and tried to capture some of those sort of acoustics of the church that, that that was coming off the piano so we didn't just use the clean piano there was some spill in the in the vocal microphones as well um, and that kind of it's, it's it's a balance of gluing everything together and getting everything to sound like you're standing in the church listening to them that's really what you're aiming for so our usual go-to technique when we're recording something like a choir is to have the choir set up where they are most comfortable so if they've been rehearsing for weeks in a certain position in the church have them set up like they normally do don't start shifting sections around or something like that because we were quite time constrained it was important to just have them feel as comfortable as possible um, so as they're not conscious of what we're doing and nervous about that they they'd never really been sort of professionally recorded before. So um, a couple of the ladies seemed a little bit nervous, but again, that's 90% of the job of recording is putting people at ease and making them feel comfortable and knowing that you're not gonna shout at them if they do a bad take or, or something like that. Um, so we had a chat with a few of them beforehand and Kath, who's the um, choir master slash conductor slash, I don't actually know what the official term for that is. I think it's choir master isn't it? I'm such a philistine. I'll probably get struck by lightning when I leave here. Anyway, she was fantastic. Um, really motivational with the ladies in the choir. Clearly a fantastic musician. Um, and it was, it was, I got a huge amount of pleasure just watching how good she was at leading the choir. She was absolutely fantastic. And that made our job incredibly easy. So the first thing to do when you're recording something like this, or if you're recording a church organ or, or something like that, is to get it happening so in this case we got the choir just rehearsing just running through one of the pieces that they wanted to record and then very simple thing of walk around the space so in this case it was a church so just walk around the church and when it sounds really good 
be aware of that to go oh it sounds great here and then you know try something okay over here i can hear the sopranos but i can't hear the piano or and and just walk around the building until you find a location that sounds great to you and once you've found that spot then that's where you want to put your microphones it's just a it's a basic thing really um i remember uh, quite a famous producer slash engineer when i was first starting out um gave me a hugely influential piece of advice at the time because i was struggling with mic and drums and and um i, I play hammond and mic and the leslie you've got the rotating speaker which can be an incredibly different uh, incredibly difficult thing to mic up and i was asking him about microphone techniques and stuff like that and he said basically put the microphone where the sound comes out and i was like oh yeah okay so if you're micing a trumpet you know the sound most of the sound comes out the bell of the trumpet so that's where you want to put your microphone if you're micing a guitar amp there's a speaker in it so you want to put the microphone generally as a rule in front of the speaker if you're micing a human you want to put the microphone in front of their mouth and that's it's really basic um but you know use your ears so when you're micing something if you're micing something that you're unfamiliar with if you've never mic'd an acoustic guitar before have the player sit in the room um if you've got a great sounding room then move them around until you if you want a bit of room ambience you get a bit of room ambience generally try not to have them in the middle of the room because if there's going to be any room modes affecting bass response and things like that that's where it's going to be worse try not to get them in a corner try and get them sort of a third of the way down the room if you can get them to play the guitar and just walk around the room and listen to the guitar and go oh it sounds great here and if it sounds great there then that's where you put your microphone so it's 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 a fairly basic thing but a lot of people when it comes to recording something like a choir tend to panic especially if they've never really done it before and you know oh, how on earth am i going to do this um, and you can do it with two microphones just walk around the building listen to where it sounds good and that's where you put your microphone so that's what we did um and we set up two of these so these are sort of modern classics i guess um they're not hugely expensive uh road nt1a you can pick these up for i think about 130 quid each so they're not massively expensive at all and we set them up in an xy configuration so um because we're using more than one microphone we need to take into account phase and stuff like that so i know i didn't want to use a spaced pair in case we had phase problems between the two i wanted to get the capsules as closely as possible so we got two microphone stands we mounted one like that and we mounted one like that so that one was picking up the left hand side of the choir this one was picking up the right hand side of the choir listen with the headphones experimented with the positioning a little bit to see what sounded best and where it sounded best Bom, that's it that's your position so that was basically that gave us kind of 80 percent of the sound just from those two microphones now we'd spoken to cast before and we knew that they were going to be doing a couple of more contemporary pieces as well as a couple of softer pieces so i decided that i wanted to use some spot microphones on the four different sections so there was a first soprano second soprano um, alto one and alto two there were four groups in the choir so on each group we used one of these now these microphones are incredible i've mic'd up a grand piano with a pair of neumann u87s which are expensive um, and i've mic'd up a grand piano with two of these which are tascan tm80s they're quite an unusual microphone in that they're midway between small and large diaphragm condenser and they've got an aluminium diaphragm which is quite unusual um, and i preferred the sound of these on the piano over the u87s um, there's just something great about them for acoustic sources anything that's a little bit natural um, so we use these as spot mics so we had one on the first sopranos one on the second sopranos on, and the other two sections knowing that when we got back to the studio and we were mixing it then we could get a, a good blend of the general sort of overall picture from the stereo pair and then if there was a section in a piece where we needed to bring the second sopranos up a little bit we had a spot mic and we had some flexibility with with mixing that um, now on a couple of the pieces on the contemporary pieces these microphones sounded so good that i actually did it the other way around so the the main mix consisted of the spot mics and we bought the 
main stereo pair just up slightly underneath to, to bring some ambience in. Whereas on some of the slower, more classical pieces, uh, the stereo pair sounded better. It was a more sort of homogenous sound. You couldn't really hear individual voices. It just sounded like the choir did in the room. Um, so again, on the style of music, it depends on on how you mix it and how you record it. But as a general rule, if you're recording something like a choir, you can do it with two microphones, just walk around the building and where it sounds best to you, then that's, that's your starting point for the microphones. So let's have a little look at the session. Let's just play a bit of music. So this is a piece called uh, Furisato, which I think is Japanese, it's either a Japanese nursery rhyme or it's, it's, it's something Japanese. Anyway, it's quite beautiful. I'm just gonna shut up so we can listen to it for a minute. So as you can see on the screen here, we've got our different channels going on. So we've got the road left and right there. So that's our main stereo pair. And then we've got the four spot mics on each of the four sections. I, for ease of sort of leveling, I've sent the stereo pair to a bus, which is the road pair there. And I've sent the four spot mics to a bus as well, which is there. And you can see from the levels here, we've got the roads up at kind of maximum and then the spot mics are just adding a little bit underneath let's have a little listen to to each one so this is just the roads on their own you can also hear i've put quite a bit of reverb on as well i often if i'm recording something like a choir i'll put a pair of microphones quite a way back from the choir to pick up some ambience of the room. In this particular case it was a very small church and there wasn't really any noticeable reverb. It, the room sounded great but I knew that we were going to add some artificial reverb when we got back to mix it to just give it a bigger kind of lusher sound so I didn't bother with a, an ambient pair um, in this case so this is just the dry Rode microphones. Treatment wise, you can see from the plugins that are on the microphones here, I've done absolutely nothing to it at all. It's just the sound coming off the microphones and nothing else. So let's have a little listen to the spot mics, which will be really quiet. So you can hear different character in the microphones when we combine everything and add some reverb. that's our finished result. So very easy mix job, just a case of leveling the microphones. There's a couple of places in the piece where the balance changes and you can probably see from the desk here that there's some automation going on as the, the, the faders move around. Very simple mix job. Um, on the output bus, we've got just the ds -er catching some of the very tops of the tss because there was quite a bit of sibilance in some of the S's. So we've got the Waves ds -er, in this case, doing nothing at the moment, but when there is a strong S, it's just bringing those S's down a little bit. Um, we've got a very, very light bit of compression going on on some of the more contemporary louder tracks. Let me just stop that a second. Um, so we've got the SSL plug in here, which is bypassed because that's a rock compressor, and I really don't want the sound of the SSL bus compressor on a choral recording. Um, the FG Red, which is just, just pulling some very high peaks down on the louder song, it's just a tiny bit. And then the same with the Very Mew um, at the bottom there. Um, these, this little compressor rack from Slate is fantastic. It's it's my go-to bus compressor of choice because it gives you you know the best of these are all based on classic compressors and it gives you the best of of all those worlds in one rack. And I like to if I'm going to compress something, I like to use more than one compressor. Um, so if I need to compress 
a snare drum or a vocal and I need some quite heavy compression on it, I'll generally use two or three compressors doing half the work than one compressor doing everything, unless I want a noticeably pumping sound with rock drums or something like that, in which case I might just use one and slam it. Normally, if I'm going for a more natural sound, two compressors doing half the job of one compressor is normally sounds better than just slamming the one. So um, here we've got the SSL doing nothing. That's doing a tiny, tiny little bit and the very me is doing a tiny, tiny little bit as well. Um, and then let's have a look at Ozone, which is just on the output bus. Again, so this was kind of mastered in the, in the project. Um, so we've got the maximizer, which is just generally, it's just turning the volume up. It's not actually doing anything at all. Um, equalizer, we've got a slight dip there, uh, 1,180.3 1, hertz, if you want to be precise. So that's basically taking out a little bit of 1K, which can sound a, a bit nasal on, on some vocals. Um, it looks like quite an aggressive cut, uh, but it isn't. This, this, the, 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 you really have to shift it with the um, isotope equalizer to, to get anything. It's just kind of taking probably half a dB, maybe a dB off there and we've got a dynamic EQ which is let's go back I don't know if you'll hear it on this track or see what it's doing but it's again it looks quite aggressive but it isn't it's just taking some very highs off on this particular piece it's not taking anything off at all and then the imager so we wanted a big wide stereo image we were getting a great stereo image from the road microphones the reverb adds to that and i just wanted a, it's again it's not a massive amount of enhancement um just a little bit of the isotope image just to widen that stereo image and make it feel big and lush and and lovely so very minimal processing with this kind of recording it's all about getting it right at source so using microphones that you know are going to work for the job um, and just trying to get it sound sounding as good as you can when you're there it's important to take some closed back headphones with you that will block out the the noise in the room so you can actually hear what you're recording monitor everything with headphones if someone coughs halfway through then you need to get them to do another take if you hear the cough in the headphones so it's very important to kind of monitor it as you go um, and, and try and get the best sound you can at source so one of the great things that um, the ladies do is they do some more I mean that they, they do pieces like that the Furisato which is just beautiful um, but they also do some more contemporary pieces as well we'll go to one of those in a minute let's just have a listen to another one of the softer ones first so this one's called uh, Lorde Dominum which I've probably pronounced completely wrong because again I'm a Philistine so this one you can see on the Logic Project I've muted all the spot mics because we felt Kath came in a week later when I'd done a rough mix and we just went through everything and because I wanted to make sure she was happy with the balance of, of her choir and how they sounded. And we decided that just the sound from the stereo pair was better for this particular piece than having all the microphones in. So we've just got the two Rode microphones and then we've just got the, the piano there as well. Let's have a little bit of a listen to this one. So that sounds great. Let's, I'm just gonna solo the two microphones so you can hear what spill we had coming through from the piano. Let's just solo those two. So you can clearly hear there's some piano in there. And it's just, it's just kind of gluing everything together. When you put the DI piano in as well, that you can now hear what the piano is doing and it's just kind of glued everything together nicely but these i mean these these two microphones on their own just sound absolutely fantastic they're great microphones if you're just starting out recording and you want to know what you should go for if you're looking for a large diaphragm condenser then the rode nt1a is a superb choice for about for around 100 quid they're they're fantastic really good
So it's just a great sound, really, really happy with that. Let's uh, just move on to one of the more contemporary pieces. So these were were a bit of a surprise when I mean, some of them were almost gospel-like. It was like, oh, wow, you know, this is coming from a sort of rock and roll background. Um, it was great to hear some more some more contemporary stuff as well. Let's have a little bit of the little bit of a listen to the very Michael Jackson esque intro um, to this one. So we've brought the spot mics in for this one um, and they're a lot louder than they were on the softer pieces. So we're getting a little bit more of a contemporary sound because it's more of a contemporary piece. There's less reverb on it. There's a little bit less of the, the room sound from the roads and, and the, the spot It's really kind of focusing on the spot mics and the, the stereo pair are just there to kind of bolster that and just put a little bit of ambience back in. So if you listen to the dynamics that are coming up here, really soft. And then they, they this, this was Kath's directing, uh, conducting, just really bringing the soft bits down and really bringing the loud bits up. So the important thing for us then to do as engineers is to not compress the hell out of anything so as it's all just a flat, line when you look at the audio waveform we want to leave those dynamics intact so great piece let's have a little listen to the last one they did and i'll just quickly go over what reverbs were used as well because james and myself spent hours and hours auditioning different reverbs on this to try and find one we worked and in the end we used a combination of, there wasn't one that quite did it so we used a combination of two so let's just go on to the last piece here which is called Hail Holy Queen um, which was you this is from a film but I'm not very good with sort of musical films um, so I couldn't tell you what it is leave it in the comments below if you know Let's have a look at the reverb. So we've got Logic Space Designer, which is just on a warm vocal hall. Uh, it's a 3.26 second reverb. Let's just have a listen to that on its own. So just a nice big warm reverb on that. And then the second one we've got, uh, so it's one of the soft tube reverbs, just a vocal chamber to give a sort of shorter, more just a shorter, more ambient kind of sound to it. So now we're going more into kind of gospel territory, uh, hence the emphasis more on the spot mics and a slightly more contemporary sound. Uh, there was a tambourine going on in the background which on listening on the day I felt just blended in perfectly so we didn't need a separate microphone on the tambourine and there was also a, a solo vocal in this as well, um, a soloist over the top of the, the whole choir. We could have put a spot mic on the soloist but we were, she did what a soloist should do and she was really projecting when she sang her part. So that was being picked up by one of the spot mics perfectly. So we didn't need to go in closer with a microphone specifically on her. Oh, 
there's the solo on the on the top there so there we go that's just a brief explanation of um, a choral recording fairly straightforward um, so very quick setup very quick get out and we had probably an hour and a half in the middle to, to capture everything so in that kind of situation you sort of need to go a bit prepared and know what you're going to do with the microphones and how you're going to approach it um, because there was a different mix of music we approached the two genres if you like very differently the softer more classical pieces we concentrated on the stereo pair and just used the spot mics to augment that and then on the more contemporary pieces such as this, we focused on the spot mics and then used the stereo pair to kind of aug augment that. And hopefully that worked quite well. Um, got some more videos coming. We've had some requests from a lot of you for different things and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're listening to, if you're, you know, sending us a message or whatever and saying, please, can you do this? We're listening and we'll, we'll, we'll try and do it. So if there's anything you wanna see, anything you wanna hear, please let us know and we'll try and do it in the next video for you. Thanks for watching. Please visit our website, cosmicaudio.co.uk and we'll see you all soon.